Welcome to the Thriving Farmer Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Kilpatrick. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and celebrate sustainable farming. We believe that you can build a profitable, sustainable farm that gives you true farm freedom. Join us as we talk to farmers, innovators, educators, and entrepreneurs to glean their top takeaways in business and life. Hey, Thriving Farmers, Michael Kilpatrick here with you, another episode of the Thriving Farmer podcast. And today my guest is Julie Bocchese, an SEO consultant for agriculture and horticulture businesses and founder of Homegrown Reach. With a deep passion for supporting local agriculture, Julia focuses on making businesses easily discoverable to their ideal customers through tailored optimization strategies. Julia, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. So give us a little bit of a background of what caused you to, I guess, go into SEO, but also you're Mm -hmm. focused on farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I kind of fell into SEO about seven or eight years ago. Um, I actually started with a travel photography blog um, that I still have up and running um, and just learned different marketing strategies for that. And then I was working a corporate job that I wanted to quit. So I started writing content for small businesses and optimizing them because that's what I'd learned how to do and realized they had no idea what I was doing or why they were all of a sudden getting a bunch of traffic from Google. Um, So that's when I transitioned into focusing more on, you know, SEO. Um, And I actually have a, my first business is uh, called Julia Renee Consulting, where I do SEO and Pinterest for small creative businesses. Um, And a little over a year ago, I started getting some inquiries from like landscapers and farmers and realized they didn't really have someone to turn to for, you know, SEO for farmers. So that's when I started my second business, um, Homegrown Reach, where I I do focus primarily on farmers. And it's something I'm passionate about because I love, you know, getting CSAs and visiting local farms. um, But I do sometimes have trouble finding them on Google. (laughs) So I know there's definitely a need for, you know, ranking higher and reaching people like me who are searching like for their services. Mm -hmm. So why don't we kind of uh, kind of go to the 30,000 foot view first and Mm -hmm. What is SEO? Because I'm sure a lot of farmers mm-hmm. are like, I don't even know if I need a website. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, um, and it's basically just the practice of making sure Google understands what your website is about in order to rank you on Google for you know those keywords. So, and those keywords were for like a CSA farm would be things like mm-hmm. CSA or Farm Box or Organic mm-hmm. Farm or things like that. Yes. Plus your location. If you are serving your like local area, make sure you have your location very clear near the top of the page. (laughs) Okay. All right. So in our instance, now here's a quite interesting question. Our main city that Mm -hmm. we serve is Dayton, Ohio. We are in Carlisle. Mm -hmm. We'd probably want to have our address, but we would want to have like Dayton CSA in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wherever you serve and you know, if it's multiple locations or like a region or something like that, um, you can play around with, you know, different freezings of that. Um, but yeah, definitely having your address on there if you do have people that like go to your farm or, you know, visit your farm for other things. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk for other two aspects here about a website. So a lot of farms mm-hmm. don't have a website. Um, mm-hmm. What does that, why would a farm want to have a website? Um, I mean, for people like me who are searching for what you have to offer, (laughs) the nice thing about Google is you don't have to rely on having tons of followers like you do on like, you know, Instagram and Facebook. Um, And, you know, not all of those followers are going to turn into customers anyway. They might just follow you because they like learning about your farm. Um, They might not even be like in your region or even in your state. But someone who goes to Google and is searching specifically for CSA in Dayton, Ohio, Um, they're much more likely to convert into a customer because they're searching for exactly what you have to offer. Um, So like your Instagram posts, they're not really going to, you know, rank on Google. But if you have a website and you have the information that people are searching for, that's a really great way to find people who are, you know, searching exactly for what you have to offer. Okay, absolutely. And for a website, are there specific pages that you recommend farms kind of Mm -hmm. uh, keep up there? Give us a little bit of overview of that. Yeah, so the basics are home, about, and contact pages. Um, All three of those are very important because Google does have site readers that will go to your website and check for those pages um, to, like, you know, make sure you're a legit business and it's not some, like, bot-generated website in Russia or something like that. Um, So those three you definitely want to have both for Google but also for potential customers who want to have an easy way to learn more about you and to contact you. 
Um, other pages I recommend, you know, it definitely varies on what you have to offer, but um, if you have, you know, kind of core products that you offer or like a CSA, you definitely have a CSA page. Um, if you have any specific services, so like if you have um, events or, you know, host people at your farm, something like that, have different pages for that. So you don't need to go crazy and create like 30 new pages, but kind of having like core pages that cover your main products and your main services can, you know, be really beneficial. Um, right now I'm actually working with a farmer who offers like kind of five different products, but only had one page and that page can't really, you know, rank for five very different keywords. Um, so we're working on creating like separate pages for each of those products. So that way each of those pages has a good opportunity for ranking for those keywords. And that way when someone goes to their site, they can also go to the exact product page that they want to get more information rather than having to scan through one page to find, you know, search for the information that they're looking for. Okay, so that was the next question, is that you shouldn't have just one long page. It should be multiple pages right. that are specialized. If you don't have a website yet and that sounds intimidating, it's totally fine to launch with just one page, but definitely work on adding the other ones. Um, but don't worry about like launching a new website right off the bat with 20 pages. Like Just get something up <laughs> and you can expand yes. later. Okay, so then the next question is, if we are talking about multiple products, should I list or mention all of them on that home page, or should it only be on the specific other pages? Is that something that Google cares about? Mm -hmm. it, I'll say it depends on like what products you have. Um, so like if you offer both you know, meat and vegetable products, um, you can definitely say both of those on your home page. I'll say your home page will likely rank more for something like farm in Dayton, Ohio, or like organic farmer, or, you know, something that's more specific to your general farm. Um, but it is hard for one page to rank for a variety of different products. So for your homepage, I'd focus on, you know, because it's also kind of an introduction to your, your farm and what you have to offer for, for Google and also for potential customers. So kind of just using your homepage to, you know, give an overview of what you have to offer and then using those specific product or services pages um, to get into more detail for what you have. Um, but definitely you, on your homepage, you can say that you have like, you know, vegetables and meat products um, and then like using calls to action to link to both of those pages. So that way someone can easily get to whatever page they want to go to once they, you know, get the basic information that they're looking for. Gotcha. So with, let's say a farm, is there any like tricks of the trade for uh, SEO that folks need to be aware of? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say a trick, but just something that's overlooked is having your location <laughs> near the top of the page. Um, and also having it on every page, because um, this is really helpful to reinforce to Google, like where you're located, what service areas, you know, that you service. Um, and also for potential customers who land on your, your website, because they're probably, first of all, they're not going to go to every single page if you feel like it's overkill to have your location on every page, but also you don't know exactly which page they're going to land on. So if they land on, you know, your CSA page, but you don't have your location there, they may be confused about if you're in your their area, um, if they are able to use your CSA or, um, so they might leave your site pretty quickly if it's unclear where you're located and if they can even, you know, use your services. Um, so making sure that you have your location very clear, both for Google and for potential customers. Gotcha. So talk to me a little bit about uh, what folks should be focusing on with like images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so images are helpful to, you know, show off what you have to offer. Um, I do recommend making sure you don't have a lot of super large like banner images. Um, I, I've seen a lot of websites that have like at the top of the page, um, a slideshow of banner images that can actually really slow down your site. So someone has to sit there and wait for the images to load before they can actually see any information about your farm or what you have. Um, so definitely reduce the number of like huge images that you have. Um, if you do want to have like a large banner of slideshow images, cause you like the way it looks, um, put text above that. So that way people can read. Um, and get, you know, at least the basic information about who you are and where you're located before they have to wait for like images to load. Um, there are image compression tools. One that's free is um, tinyjpeg.com. Um, I think you can compress up to like 20 images at a time, but um, that can help reduce the size of the images without like reducing the quality. Um, Cause you also don't wanna have like low quality blurry images on your site because that doesn't look very you know professional so having photos are great is great but making sure you're doing it strategically and not 
you know, using tons of large images that will actually hurt your site and slow it down. Gotcha. Hello, dear listeners. As the green shoots of spring emerge, signaling planting season in full swing, isn't it the perfect time to bring new life onto the land? At shop.growingfarmers.com, a treasure trove awaits to transform even the most forgotten corner of your space into a vibrant oasis. Imagine lush elderberries and willows swaying in the breeze, or the sweet promise of homegrown strawberries and the hearty depth of rhubarb pie made from your harvest. Perhaps you've pondered over the joy of harvesting your own potatoes. Well, ponder no more. Our small business is dedicated to bringing you an exceptional variety of plant material to make these dreams a reality. We're shipping daily, ensuring that your planting ambitions are supported with timely and quality deliveries right to your doorstep. So if you've been eyeing that sunny spot by the fence or considering how to fill that quiet corner of your yard, look no further. Our perennial selections are not just plants. They're future harvests, memories, and the beginning of a more sustainable lifestyle right from your own land. Visit shopgrowingfarmers.com today and make the first step towards a greener, more fruitful farmstead or garden. We can't wait to grow with you. And then is there, should you be labeling those images before you upload them with Mm -hmm. like, you know, some SEO in the actual Mm -hmm. image name? It helps a tiny, tiny bit. So like if you already have uploaded a ton of photos to your site, you don't need to like remove them all and rename them and re-upload them. Um, It's more important to have image alt text on the images, which you can do on the website platform after the photo is uploaded. Um, So image alt text is important both for Google because they can't see what is in an image um, and also for accessibility. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's probably coming. Um, So for anyone who uses like a screen reader because they um, have, you know, visual impairments or something, um, they can, the screen reader will tell them what's in the image from the image alt text. Um, So using, um, you know, language that describes what's in the image and not just like trying to keyword stuff. So like if you have an image of, you know, tomatoes, don't say like farm in Dayton, Ohio, like (laughs) describe the tomatoes. Yes. (laughs) Um, And also, I mean, people aren't going to Google images to really search for like, you know, farms or, you know, something like that. They're searching more for like products or, um, you know, something that's more visual. So making sure you're you're using image alt text strategically and also making sure you're also, you know, being accessible and uh, making it easy for anyone who comes to your site to be able to get all the information they need. Gotcha. Okay. Now I know some people, at least it used to be that like they would just put a whole bunch of keywords at the bottom of their pages Mm -hmm. and like in in clear text so that it was Mm -hmm. there, but not visible. Is that still something that is bad, good? Very bad. Um, Okay. Yeah. Google does not like that. They don't like these like shady practices that, you know, people used to have, um, you know, before Google wised up. Um, So making sure that you're using keywords within your website copy and like incorporating them in the text and don't just like have a string of, you know, keywords somewhere hidden on the page. Um, It's usually recommended having a keyword within the website copy, like one to 5% of all of the text. Um, So you don't need to like repeat yourself over and over and over again. Um, Just having it a few times naturally within your website copy is definitely going to help your rankings. Okay. And then what about using like AI driven text? Mm -hmm. Is that something that is also starting to get frowned upon or is that still a good way to be writing copy? Mm -hmm. So this could be an entire podcast episode. (laughs) Yeah. Um, If you guys have AI questions, let me know um, because there are lots of interesting case studies on this. So Google has different ways of, um, and different metrics, metrics of how they read websites and, you know, how they rank them. Um, so one thing that they have is called EEAT. So it's like looking at your, um, experience, authoritativeness, trustworthiness, um, things like that to make sure it's, you know, legit sites that they're ranking, not just weird, you know, robot ones. Um, so the experience, in EEAT that was added, I think about like a year and a half ago or something, um, because Google is looking for more websites that have that human connection and it doesn't sound like, you know, just any other website that any robot could have written. So you can definitely use AI tools to help get you started, but having that like more personal connection within your website copy, you know, having personal examples or anecdotes, something like that, um, that's going to help you both connect with potential customers, but also show Google that, you know, you're a legit human. um, And it's not just, you know, AI generated content that you just, you know, use 
chat GPT for and then just put it up on your site without like even looking at it. Um, yeah. Also, I will say a lot of these AI tools aren't great with writing like optimized content or optimized website copy. Um, I've tried <laughs> and they like yeah. will still just put keywords in weird places or like not use them enough times or, you know, things like that. So making sure that you're, you know, you can definitely use AI as a starting point, but adding that personal touch and then also adding, you know, making sure things are optimized correctly. Um, that's definitely going to, going to help the most. Let's talk about uh, what platforms to use for your website, because mm -hmm. that's obviously a big question that folks have. You know, should I use Wix or mm -hmm. WordPress or Squarespace or even Shopify? Do you have mm -hmm. a favorite or, and again, obviously there's different things for different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say the top ones that I'd recommend are WordPress, Squarespace, um, Shopify, and then Show It, which I don't know many farmers that use it, but it is a, you know, a great platform. If you are interested in something that's a little more um you know, flexible with design. Um, Wix, I really don't like. <laughs> they have okay. made improvements, um, but it is not great for um, SEO. I found there are a lot of issues with um, when you make a design, you know, it looks great on your computer, but it doesn't always resonate on other screen sizes. Um, so a lot of, I've seen a lot of like text and images get cut off because um, you know, it, it does, it's not great with um, multiple screen sizes. So I'd recommend Squarespace, WordPress, Shopify. Shopify is great if you have a lot of products. Um, you don't necessarily need to use Shopify if you're just, you know, having like five website pages or something. Um, but those, you know, they all have their pros and cons. So it really depends on what you're looking in on a website. Um, also, how much time you want to be spending on your website because some require, you know, a little more expertise than others. So yeah, it all depends. Gotcha. So then, uh, obviously, WordPress is the one that has the most options in regards mm -hmm. to like plugins and things like that. For someone that is going to spend the time to use WordPress, do you have a specific WordPress builder that you like, or you still use the native builder? Um, I've used quite a few. Um, WordPress Bakery is a pretty good one. Um, Avita is one that I've used. It's pretty good. Um, Elementor is pretty basic, so if you just need a basic website up, you know, that's a good starting point. Um, it's not super advanced or customizable if that's something you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, there are lots of, you know, great ones out there. So, again, depends on how much you want to invest in, <laughs> in a builder and, you know, how much time you want to learn how to use it and everything. Yeah, and then is there any SEO plugins that you like for WordPress specifically? So Yoast is the main one that people use. Um, that's a great one. Um, uh, All in one SEO and rank math are two other ones that I, um, I've used quite a bit. Um, I will say I love Yoast, but just remember to use them as, you know, guidelines and not like they're not the experts in SEO because the tool can't actually analyze what you're saying. Um, so if you're using like you know, keyword variations within your website copy. Google understands that, you know, they mean the same thing, but Yoast won't, so they'll tell you you're not using your keyword enough times. Um, they also can't analyze um, the keyword to tell you if it's a good one or not. Um, so if you're just trying to target the word farm, um, you're not going to rank for that. <laughs> but if you use it enough time, you know, Yoast will tell you, good job, you're using your keyword enough time. Um, but like just using something general like farm is way too competitive, way too saturated. Um, so use keyword research tools over Yoast for things like that. Okay, gotcha. And then just use Yoast to input them into the actual pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can also use Yoast for um, like writing the title tags and meta descriptions. Um, and they're great because, you know, they'll tell you if things are like too long or too short and things like that. Okay. All right. Now, if someone wants to, let's say, um, you know, work with your company, kind of describe a little bit like the services that you offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're quite a mix of services. Um, so I offer things from like SEO audits, if you want more like, you know, guidance, but you want to do it yourself. Um, custom SEO projects, depending on if you need like an overhaul of your site or if you're, you know, working with a website designer and also want to incorporate SEO into that. Um, and then I have an SEO foundation setup package. So that one covers things like, you know, um, keyword research, optimizing your website copy, writing the title tags and meta descriptions and everything. Um, so quite a mix depending on like 
how much work you want to do <laughs> and how much work you want to um, you know pass on. I do also offer like monthly packages with Google Business Profile Management, um, writing and optimizing website content, things like that. Gotcha. Talk to us a little bit about the importance of a Google mm -hmm. Business Profile. Yeah, so Google Business Profile, formerly called Google My Business, which I still mix up sometimes. Um, it's super helpful for local businesses, um, especially if you have you know a form that people will go to. So that way, it can rank on you know Google Maps when people are searching within Google Maps. Um, but with Google Business Profile, you are literally giving Google information about your farm um, rather than like they, with your website, they have to go to your website, gather the information to understand what to rank you for. But with Google Business Profile, you're literally giving them all the information. You're telling them where you're located, what services and products you offer, um, information about your you know farm and your CSA. It's also where people can put reviews, which is really helpful for, you know, um, have, having your profile rank higher, but also for, you know, potential customers to see that, you know, you have great products um, to, and that can encourage them to buy from you rather than from someone else. Um, so it's really helpful. I do recommend being active on there monthly with like updating photos, adding new posts for anything that you have upcoming, um, and then replying to reviews and encouraging customers to leave you reviews. Okay, so talk to me about replying to reviews. So just mm -hmm. read, if someone leaves a review, just do you try to do anything with SEO in that review? Like, thank you for visiting mm -hmm. our farm where you picked up strawberries or something like that. Is that going after that? Not necessarily. Um, it's more okay. just showing, you know, potential customers and your, you know, current cluster customers who are hopefully returning, um, you know, purchase more products, um, you know, that you have a personal connection with your customers. Um, and then also just showing Google that you're active on your profile. Because if you set up your Google business profile and then you don't touch it for a year, Google isn't clear on if you're like actually still in business, if you're active or anything like that. So replying to reviews shows Google that you do have an active profile and you're, you know, actively communicating with your customers. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And then... Um, so that has that feature of where you can do updates and, and mm -hmm. pictures and stuff. So you definitely recommend using that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you don't need to go crazy and like add, you know, 50 new photos each month, just like adding a couple, um, especially like if you have a busier season, you know, being more active during the busier season rather than if you don't really have anything going on, like in December. Um, but just being a little bit active on each month can definitely help. Okay. All right. What would you say to the brand new farmer who's thinking about just getting started? What kind of like advice would you give mm -hmm. them? Um, so definitely create a Google business profile account um, because, you know, that will get you on Google like pretty much immediately. Um, your website, it can take time to rank. So um, it's definitely helpful to have a website, um, but I would just, have, you know, get started with the basics with your website and then you can add more later, um, especially if things change and, you know, you start offering some products and then decide you don't want to do that anymore. Um, so just get the basics with your website launched and then you can definitely add more pages or, you know, change your website copy at any point. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with folks? Um, don't be intimidated. Okay. <laughs> I know with SEO, there are like tons and tons of different pieces of it. Um, but you know, just being super clear on, you know, the products and services that you have and your location, um, and focusing on making sure that your customers can get this information, that means Google can also get that information and, you know, things are clear to them. So just making sure that things are easy to navigate and easy to for customers to find what they're looking for. Okay, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Julia, for coming on today. Appreciate your sharing. Yeah, thanks for having me. So there you have it, another episode in the books. So I'd love if you would hop on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. Those mean everything to us. We love to hear what you're thinking. If you have a podcast guest that you can recommend, please pop on over to the Thriving Farmer Podcast website and leave us a review. That's thrivingfarmerpodcast.com.